Father, we bless the Almighty today for his wonderful mercies and kindness upon our lives. For he alone is worthy to be praised. And we thank him. Greet each and every one of you in the mighty name of Yahshua. We bless all of you who have chosen to view us and attend by live stream today. We want to say shalom to you. As you know, on Wednesday evenings, we always have our time of prayer, and our prayer times are always a wonderful time of coming before the Almighty in prayer and supplication and thanksgiving and interceding on the behalf of the needs of the people of Israel, that is the house of Israel and the Messiah, and also on the behalf of all people, unbelievers, and you name it, because it's the will of Elohim that all might be saved kings, for those that are in authority, so that we could live a quiet and peaceable life in all piety and honesty. So we love our prayer time. And uh, at this point, we want to shift gears. We want to pro provide the teaching on today. And today's teaching is going to be dealing with the concept of our source of direction. So this teaching is primarily for the people of Elohim in particular, and in general it's for the world but in particular, it's for the people of Elohim. Find that it is important that we be reminded of what the scriptures have to say to us about our source for direction. And before we get into the text that we're going to read, let us have a word of prayer at this time. Abba Yah, thank you for your mercies, your kindness, and your graciousness to us today. I thank you for the opportunity to be able to share and to discuss the scriptures in regards to what you have revealed to us as being the source for direction in our lives for guidance, for how we are to receive your counsel so that we may know what decisions to make and to carry out your biddings in the earth. Abba, I ask that as I present this information today that you would be the speaker behind the one who is sharing, that you would be the illuminator to open our eyes and give us truth. I thank you today, Abba Yah, and pray that each one that is assembled to hear this teaching and discussion, that their hearts would be open that their minds would be receptive, and that they would hear you. And so today we bless you in advance and thank you. In the mighty name of Yahshua, amen. Let's go to the Psalm 119. This is a very familiar Psalm. Most believers are familiar with this verse. At least they have heard it somewhere. 
throughout the time of their walk with Elohim in Yahshua. Well, one of the things that I think that maybe many believers may not be aware of is that this particular psalm that we're reading from, or verse, shall I say, in this psalm that we're reading from, has to do specifically with the Devar Elohim. And the Devar Elohim, from the standpoint of this psalm, composes the commandments, statutes, judgments, and testimonies. We see all of these words used that reveal to us what is contained in what we call the word of Elohim. So this particular verse we're reading from Psalm 119 verse 105. And it says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. The King James Version says it like this. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. Now when the um, writer of this psalm, who we believe to be is King David, when he wrote this, he is making it known that the word of Elohim to him is regarded as the light of illumination for direction and for guidance so that he may be able to walk the straight path. Notice what it says. It is a lamp to my feet. So, with the reference being made to his feet, it is indicative that the lamp is necessary so that when someone is going out at night, they have to have a lamp so that they may be able to see where they are going when they are walking. So their feet must have light so that you'll know where to walk. The latter part of that verse, and a light to my path. Feet walk on a pathway. And so the word of Elohim is regarded as the lamp. The lamp is the source of the light. In the ancient times, the lamps were primarily oil containers. And you had to light the lamp that had the olive oil in it. Once the oil was lit, the flame would come up and it would produce the light. So the lamp is the source, the source of the light. And it was necessary to have that when you are walking in darkness. See, lamps were only used in places where there was darkness. So the indication is that we live in a world that is full of darkness. And this dark world, as the analogy is presented, represents sin and wickedness all around us. 
And in order to be able to navigate in a world of darkness, you must have light. If you do not have light, then you do not have the ability to navigate and get around to find your way and to have direction. You can't even see the straight path. You can't see the walkway unless you have light to illuminate the pathway. So David's, David says that the word is that. It says, listen, your word, your divar, is a lamp. It is the source of light. It is the source of the thing that will bring illumination for your feet to be able to walk on the right path. Now, the reason why David says this, which is quite obvious by reading the entire Psalm 119. Now, Psalm 119 is regarded as the longest psalm of all of the psalms. Let me tell you how many verses is contained in this. There are 176 verses. That's a lot. 176 verses in Psalm 119. And all of them are broken up into eight verse sections. And each section is given a title. And the title of each section is the letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Or shall I say alphabet. Now, when you read Psalm 119, it describes multiple aspects and facets of the word, the commandments, the statutes, the judgments. It talks about how it is beneficial to an individual's life. David describes how he loves the commandments and how he loves the statutes of Elohim, and how they have been his delight. There is multiple descriptions that are given in the entire psalm that is made by King David about the word, how good it is, how necessary it is, nothing but positives to say. And so when you get to Psalm 105, what David does is merely give a summation, if I can use that, regarding the word of Elohim being the source of direction. Now the reason why I needed to share that is because in our day among the believing community, there appears to have been a direction that many ministry leaders have gone on, sort of like a sidetrack, from what the Almighty has originally intended for his people as to what we should be looking at or moving toward as it pertains to seeking the Most High for direction, for guidance, so that we can make proper decisions come to right conclusions and accurately understand what the will of Elohim is. And so I find that it's necessary for us to look at, first of all, what it is 
that others outside of the house of Israel in Yahshua. We need to find out what it is that others are doing based upon what the scriptures have said in order to obtain direction for their life, to get questions answered, to try to find peace because they're troubled about the future and are very unsure about what to do. People tend to go to a lot of different links to be able to settle questions in their mind that trouble them. If we look over in the book of Devarim, chapter 18, Devarim is commonly called Deuteronomy. We're going to go to the 18th chapter, verses 10 and 11 and 12. Now, I read this passage about a week and a half ago with reference to the pagan celebration of Samhain, but, you know, this passage is applicable with reference to how pagan thinking people or people that are outside the framework of the covenant about what they do in order to get answers, to get direction. Let's look at what it says. Verse 10 of chapter 18. It says, no one shall be found among you who makes a son or daughter pass through fire or, and here's the part I want to focus on, or who practices divination. Divination being that art of trying to get answers relative to the future through the realm of the spirit. But this is not through the Ruach HaKodesh. Okay? It says, No one shall be found who practices divination or is a soothsayer. A soothsayer is one, now listen to me now, it's one who actually speaks the truth. But the truth that they are speaking is coming through the medium of the demonic spirit realm and not by the Ruach, the Holy Spirit. Okay? So I just read, No one shall be found among you who practices divination or is a soothsayer or an augur or a sorcerer. One who practices enchantments, sorcerer. Or one who casts spells, or who consults ghosts or spirits, or who seeks oracles from the dead. For whoever does these things is abhorrent to Yahuwah. It is Yahuwah your Elohim. Listen. It says, it is Yahuwah, your Elohim, who is driving you, driving them out before you. I'll read that again. For whoever does these things is abhorrent to Yahuwah. It is because of such abhorrent practices that Yahuwah, your Elohim, is driving them out before you. I just had to clear that up. Didn't read that thoroughly. And so what we see in this passage is Elohim is telling our ancient fathers that you are not to involve yourself in trying to obtain information, get questions answered through the mediums of soothsaying. He said, look, you're not to become a soothsayer an auger, 
You're not to practice divination or to become a sorcerer. You're not to cast spells. You're not to involve yourself in any of these things in order to try to make things happen for your life. See, the pagans who involved themselves in these types of practices got involved in this because they had an inner yearning to be able to know the future. Or they had an inner yearning to be able to satisfy some particular need in their life that they were unable to satisfy because of certain prohibiting conditions in their life. So because of a driving need to be able to know what to do, to make life better, to be able to satisfy a need. Say they want a particular person in their life, but that person belongs to somebody else. But they want to have that person anyway. They begin to go through some type of a spell. And they cast a spell. They cause things to happen to somehow interrupt the individual's life through demonic activity so that they can obtain what they want. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a person. It could be anything that they want. So because people have these insatiable needs and desires for whatever it may be, and they feel that they cannot obtain it because of their inability to and their natural ability, they turn to a supernatural ability through enchantments. Now see, divination, soothsaying, sorcery, witchcraft, and all these things are all mediums that utilize the spirits of darkness to be able to cause things to happen in the natural. Now, I need to say a word as to how all of these things came about. Where did sorcery come from? Where did soothsaying come from? Where did divination come from? Where did casting spells, enchantments, the idea of channeling the spirits of the dead, where did all that come from? The source by which all of that came, now someone will say, oh, well, it came from the devil, okay? And in a sense, Yes, but I'm going to tell you the specific source. Before the flood, there were angels who had an assignment to be the watchers in the earth. You can read this in the book of Hanak, that's Enoch. And these angels who were assigned to be the watchers in the earth were assigned to to instruct human beings in the things of the Most High and to keep watch over them. Now these particular angels, these particular Malachim, that's what they're properly called in Hebrew, they made a covenant with each other to come down and to marry the sons of men. So they took wives, impregnated them, and the children of these angels became the Nephilim that Genesis talks about, these giants. Now these angels corrupted the earth. Enoch describes the level of sinful corruption by which they corrupted the earth. 
And in his description, he talks about that these angels taught men how to practice witchcraft, enchantments, sorcery, root working, astrology. They taught man how to tap into the things of the spirit illegally. So all of these things that Yahuwah describes in Devarim chapter 18 verses 10 through 12 are the things that were initiated by these angels that came down. So what we see in all actuality, it was through their teaching, the teaching of these angels prior to the flood. I would like to say the Torah of these angels. The word Torah means teaching. It was through the teaching of these angels that men were able to tap into the things of the spirit, but not according to the way that Elohim had intended. And when they began to tap into these things, it brought corruptions into the world. And of course, they continued after the flood because Nimrod resurfaced he brought back this ancient religion of paganism that the watchers had introduced. So now Elohim is saying, I don't want you to get involved in any of this. This is not for you to do. And the reason why the Most High was telling his people that, because the Most High wanted his people to understand that the only teaching, and the only way in which you will be able to receive direction in your life, the only way in which you will be able to receive counsel in your life, the only way in which you'll be able to know what my will is, what my desires are, is going to be through his teaching. So Elohim wants his people to understand that the only source for direction, for counsel, for guidance, for knowing the way of Elohim would be through the methods by which Elohim teaches his people. And not by these other methods. Now, if we look over in Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 2, we also see some additional information that the Most High gives. And this additional information that the Most High gives, it, it also is with respect to warning his people not to involve themselves in doing things the way the pagans did things. And when we look at this verse, this verse has to do specifically with observing the signs of the heavens as a means of being able to make determination. Let's look at uh, Jeremiah, that's Jeremiah, chapter 10. And I'm going to read verses 1 and 2. Listen to what this says. Hear the word of Yahuwah, who speaks to you, O house of Israel. Thus says Yahuwah, do not learn the way of the nations. First thing he says. Do not learn the way of the nations. In other words, I do not want you to be like the nations doing things the way the nations do things. 
And this is very similar to what's noted here in Devarim chapter 18, 10 through 12, because in 10 through 12, what the Most High does, he gives the description first of what the nations are doing. And then he says in that 12th verse, he says, now, this is what I am doing with regard to the people who practice these things. He says, look, the ones who I'm driving out of the land before you are the ones who practice these things. So here in Jeremiah, the Most High is telling his people not to perform the practices of the nations. And the reason why he's telling them that is because they were at that point in time in full-scale paganism in Judah. And so he brings a warning to them through the prophet. And he says, do not learn the way of the nations. Or, now listen to this part right here, because this is the part I want to focus on. It says, or be dismayed at the signs of the heavens. The signs of the heavens are the sun, moon, stars, which from the stars is what contains the constellations. For the nations are dismayed at them. So when something's going on in the heavens, with the sun, the moon, the stars, and the constellations, the nations are always looking into the heavenlies to see whether it's going to be a full moon. Now their purpose for looking into the sky and seeing if there's a full moon is because they believe that when these things happen, that it's attached to some major event or some omen. The word omen has to do with some particular occurrence that will happen, that will affect the lives of men. If there's an eclipse of some type where the sun and the moon line up with each other and you have an eclipse, something special is supposed to happen. Or when the pagans would look out into the stars and would recognize the signs as which is commonly known today as the zodiac. The Zodiac is a very old system going all the way back to Babylon. And because the angels that taught man all of the different forms of sin, teaching them astrology also, how to read the stars and to be able to make determinations with regard to the constellations, to be able to make predictions, and to ascertain a person's personality and character traits that are supposedly born within a particular month, they were able to do those things by reading the constellations. These were things that were taught to men by the angels that corrupted them. So the nations would do these things. That's why it says, don't learn the way of the nations or be dismayed at the signs of the heavens for the nations are dismayed at them. So now we see here another aspect of how the pagans would go look into the heavens to be able to make determinations about people, about events, about the future, about the present, about how a person's disposition is. They got so accustomed to doing this that anytime they wanted to get answers to something, they would go and read the stars. And then they wrote it down in a book. Matter of fact, many people in the world have, who have horoscope books, all that information is old information that has been around for millennia because of what 
the angels prior to the flood taught men in teaching them astrology. Now these things the Most High said to his people, I don't want you looking up into the heavens and reading the stars and making determination. I don't want you looking at the moons and when you see the moon a certain way or you see the moon a certain color that you begin to make a determination. I don't want you to do that. That's what the pagans do. Now, what the Most High told his people to do and what he informed his people about as it relates to the sun and the moon and the stars has to do with governing time, has to do with showing man different directions as it pertains to location on the earth, such as north, south, east, and west. But never did Elohim intend for the heavenly bodies to be used for purposes of providing direction for human beings in their life. They have never been given for the purpose to give answers to a person's past, present, future, or to explain why they act a certain way or why it's hard for them to obtain their desires or to somehow help a person to locate their soulmate based upon a person who was born underneath a particular constellation which is associated with a particular month of the solar calendar. That was never the intent of the Almighty. Now, you might say, but some of that stuff is is, is, is right on, spot on. You know, I mean, some people who are born underneath those astrological signs really display a particular personality. I don't doubt that. Someone might say, well, you know, if you go look back in history, certain leaders over empires were born under certain moons. I don't doubt that. You see, the Most High in His sovereignty in creating everything designed everything in such a way where there is specialness with respect to what happens in the lives of men and the heavenly bodies. I don't doubt that at all. Actually, I believe that the whole so-called Zodiac that had been corrupted in the minds of men through those angels in all actuality when interpreted properly tell us the redemptive story of Yahshua and him coming and the fact that he was born of a virgin. I believe it tells the story but there again you have Elohim's perspective, and you have the demonic pagan system's perspective that is centered in what is presently known as the Zodiac. So I'm not saying that there's no realness to this. I'm not saying that there's no truth to it. What I am saying is that Elohim has called his people not to focus on tapping into the spiritual things to be able to obtain answers for their life. Elohim does not want his people to go through the medium of soothsaying 
to go and channel spirits to perform enchantments to get what they want out of life. You don't have to go to a psychic and let a psychic read your palm and then tell you who your soulmate's going to be or to let you know whether you're going to become wealthy in the next six months, a year, five years or so. The Most High don't want you going through those avenues to be able to get answers and make determinations for your life. I didn't say it wasn't real, it is. Because in the realm of the spirit, when the Most High declares things and when the Most High reveals things, you have Melekim that are out there in the realm of the spirit. Some that are on Yah's side and some that are on the side of Hasatan that hear and that know. And so they are able to reveal this information. So Elohim tells his people, since these angels corrupted man and brought these venues of the demonic into the earth realm because they brought it in, he said, I don't want you going through those mediums to be able to get answers and make determinations for your life or for anybody else's life. So the Most High says, listen, Jeremiah 10, 2, I don't want you looking up into the heavens to make determinations. The lining of planets, blood moons and things such as that, super moons and all of those kinds of things, they've been happening for millennia. But the Most High said, I don't want you looking at it, recognizing it, and beginning to start thinking in terms of what is Yah saying by this? He just told us here in Jeremiah chapter 10, I don't want you doing what the nations do. That's not the way you're going to determine things for your life or for the future or for anybody else's life or for the future and not even the present. But it seems as though people love signs. They feel like as though they need something. And while the Most High told our ancient fathers, don't go that way, after our people got out of Babylonian captivity and came back to the land of Israel, and I want you to just take your time as you roll with me here tonight, uh, when they got back and they were able to set up the temple, and restore the religious system. When Yahshua came on the scene, and the Pharisees, many of the religious leaders, were checking out Yahshua and questioning him as to whether he was the Messiah. The scriptures have already prophesied. I'm going to say that again. The scriptures have prophesied about the Messiah. It had prophesied. The word, the same word that David said, your word is the lamp. Your word is the light. In other words, the word is the source of our direction. It is the guide. It is the counselor. And what we find is that the word gave prophetic utterances about the Messiah to determine that Yahshua indeed was he. But the Pharisees and Sadducees and others that were there, they asked him a question. They said, you know, if you are him, give us a sign. <laughs> they shouldn't have said that. And Yahshua said, a wicked Evil and an adulterous generation seeks after a sign. Wow. That's a pretty powerful statement to make to religious leaders because this is exactly who he was talking to. It says a wicked and an adulterous generation seeks after a sign. But he says, I'm 
only going to give you this. This is the sign I'm going to give you. And notice in Messiah's response when they asked him about a sign, because what they were looking for was to see if he was going to give them some kind of an amazing portent. Now, they had already seen him work miracles and perform healings. And all of the things that the Messiah performed with the healings, the miracles, and all of that, all of that was also based upon what was prophesied in the scriptures about what he would do. But when Messiah gave them a sign, notice Messiah gave them a sign based upon an analogy in the scriptures. He said, this is a sign I'm going to give to you. He said, just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the fish, the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So the answer that Messiah gave to these religious leaders that did not believe him but wanted a sign, he gave them the word. He gave them a message that was based upon an example in the word. So he says a wicked and an adulterous generation seeks after a sign. And the reason why Messiah called them a wicked and adulterous generation is because he knew that there's no need to be seeking after signs. Elohim had said, you don't need to be going and putting out a fleece. You don't need to be seeking after anything to try to prove what Elohim said was indeed legitimate or not. And he said, you don't need to be going and looking into all of these different things to make determinations because you want something to happen. You know, there are some folks that want things to happen so bad that they will go through any length to be able to somehow justify what they want and to bring about what they want. But Messiah, he doesn't want us to Go in those directions. We as believers should not be looking or seeking after signs. So why do I bring all this out? Because uh, first of all, I wanted to show how that early in the first century, you had this spirit of sign seeking. Wanting to tap into things to be able to make determinations. Way back then, you had the whole, what they call Jewish mysticism developing. You had what they call gematria, where you get into numerology. All of that is a part of the whole craft, divination through numbers. And there was a book that came out uh, some time ago, not all that long ago, within the past 20 years or so, probably more like 25 years ago, called um, the Bible Codes. Many of you probably heard of the Bible Codes, where there was this, this hype about being able to look into the original Hebrew text and to perform a certain method to be able to obtain information about people. Well, it would bring up the names of people, events that would happen in people's lives, all through what they call the Bible code. And because someone who was known and popular in religious circles, took that concept, put it in a book, and presented it, caused believers to begin to start looking at the Bible and wanting to see what they would call the hidden mysteries. Without realizing 
that the root of the Bible code, and there again, I'm not saying that the stuff's not real, but the stuff is rooted in divination. Oh, I know I probably touched a nerve by saying that. I, I know I touched a nerve by saying that. You see, Elohim told his people not to be looking into things or to performing customs or activities the way the nations do it. See, the nations are involved. The pagans are involved in looking into information, trying to find hidden mysteries, using numerology, using codes, and even use the Bible to figure out some type of code to come up with a prediction or to even determine when the earth was created. The Most High never called his people to tap into the text of Scripture and to perform these methods of being able to make determinations. Why? Because he knew that it would cause people to become dependent upon these methods and ways of trying to find out how to determine the future so that people can order their lives a certain way. But the Most High said that we're supposed to listen to him and to his commandments. Let me go... Let me go into Devarim chapter 13. I need to tie this in because I, I need to help us to have some confirmation on what Elohim has said about what we must do in having direction in our lives. Because you know he sends prophets and prophets give us information but even with prophets, the purpose of the Nevi'im is to guide the people of Elohim in the obedience to the commands of the Creator. That's the purpose. Let's see what it says. And I've read this before. I've read it a couple times in some of our Shabbat teachings, but I need to read it again. <clears throat> I'm going to start at verse 1 of chapter 13, Devarim chapter 13, verse 1. It says, if prophets or those who divine by dreams appear among you and promise you omens or portents, and the omens or portents, that's the prophetic message, declared by them, take place, and they say, let us follow other Elohim whom you have not known, and let us serve them. You must not heed the words of those prophets or those who divine by dreams. For Yahuwah, your Elohim, is testing you to know whether you indeed love Yahuwah, your Elohim, with all your heart and soul. Now listen to verse 4. Elohim is very specific about what he wants when it comes to direction for our life and guidance. Listen, Yahuwah says, Yahuwah your Elohim, you shall follow. So we're to follow Yahuwah the Most High. It says, him alone shall you fear. So it's telling us that we must fear him. We must not fear the messengers that he sends. In other words, when the messenger that he sends brings a word and the word comes to pass, we're not to then take all of our trust, put it in that prophet, and then become blind to everything that Elohim has commanded so much so that we feel as though I got to go get my word from that prophet. So when that prophet comes into town, the first thing people are doing is running to wherever that prophet is located because they feel now they got to get their word. They got to get that word. Say, oh, I got I to go. Well, prophet so-and-so, I, I got to go get my word from the Lord. 
The Elohim says to us that we must love him, we must follow him, we must reverence him. There is a degree of respect that we must have for the messengers, the servants of the Most High. But at any given moment when they begin to veer off the path and speak and declare or in any way guide the people of Elohim away from keeping the commandments of the Most High, that's when you have to draw your line in the sand. I'm going to continue reading. It says, Him alone you shall fear. Listen to this part. His commandments you shall keep. His voice you shall obey. Him you shall serve, and to him you shall hold fast. So, when it comes to direction, counsel, determinations, knowing what the will of Elohim is, it's going to come through his word. And we must keep his commandments and never get sidetracked. Now, what about those who say, well, you know, we not under the law, we under grace, and we got the Holy Spirit now. See, see, the Holy Spirit guides us, and we don't need the law anymore. We don't need the Torah anymore. We don't need none of that. That's in the quote-unquote Old Testament. You know, that was done away with. We got the Holy Spirit now, so the Holy Spirit speaks to us. The Holy Spirit guides us. The Holy Spirit is the one that gives us revelation now, and he is the one that tells us what to do and how to make determinations. Well, the Holy Spirit most definitely does lead and guide us. And the Holy Spirit definitely does bring us to the place of making determinations. But let's look at this a little bit closer when we talk about the Holy Spirit. Because you see, in your Canaan, John chapter 16, verse 13, no, in chapters 14, 15 and 16 of the book of Yochanan, that's John. Yahshua was telling his disciples about the Holy Spirit that was to come. And one of the things that he said that I want to bring out here in this discussion today is in chapter 16 and verse 13. Listen to what Messiah says here about the Holy Spirit. In the 13th verse, he says, How be it, how be it, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself. Oh, so you mean the Holy Spirit don't have his own agenda? Just speaking? He said no. It says, he will not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. So the Holy Spirit is going to show the people of Elohim things to come. But let's look at what Messiah called the Holy Spirit. Messiah said that the Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of Truth. He's called the Ruach Imunah. That's Hebrew for the Spirit of Truth. Imunah, in Hebrew, that word for truth, has to do with the idea of something being tied, tied to, and made firm with imuna. It's being tied to the foundation. 
action. Now, now, now listen. Truth is something that is rooted in foundation. All right? Now, when we look at the word truth, all right, a lot of times people like to take the word truth and try to separate that word truth from Torah. You can't separate truth from Torah. But I want to go into John chapter 17, and we're going to see how the Messiah has defined truth. Right after Messiah got finished having that Passover meal with his disciples and they were being told about the Ruach HaKodesh that would come, the Messiah said that he is called the spirit of truth. The set-apart spirit is called the spirit of truth. Notice, after he got finished having that conversation with them and he goes to the garden of Gethsemane to pray, a part of his prayer to the Father is a prayer for the unity of the Messianic Israelite community, but also in his prayer for the Messianic Israelite community our Messiah, Yahshua, tells the Father to set them apart. I want you to listen to this. Go to John chapter 17, verse 17. Listen to this. And when you get a chance, you can read the entire chapter for those who have not read through John chapter 17. But listen to this. He says in the 17th verse of the 17th chapter, sanctify, which means to set them apart. It's talking about those who had been given to him, those disciples. He says, set them apart or sanctify them through thy truth. Then he says, to define what truth is, he says, thy word is truth. What is truth? Thy word is truth. What is truth? Thy word is truth. Who is the Holy Spirit called? The Spirit of truth. So if the Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of truth, we can say that the Holy Spirit is also the Spirit of the Word. So what is the Word of Elohim? The commandments, the statutes, and the judgments, and the testimonies. What is the word of Elohim? The commandments and the statutes and the judgments of Elohim. Now, for those who probably have a problem with putting all that together, because if you go back into Psalm 119, which is where we began the discussion with, Psalm 119, verse 105, it says, Thy word is a lamp to my feet, a light to my path. And in that entire Psalm 119, the only thing it talks about is the word of Elohim. What is the word of Elohim? The commandments, statutes, judgments, they're called testimonies. All of those terms are related to the Devar, the word. So now I want to show a connection here because, you know, there, there are many who probably will say, I don't know if I can roll with that. Yahshua called the Ruach HaKodesh, the Ruach Emunah. So let's go and see a prophecy. Because Yahshua talked about the coming of the Holy Spirit that they would receive, right? And that Holy Spirit, that Ruach HaKodesh, is also referred to as the Spirit of Yahuwah, right? Let's go to Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 36. Ezekiel chapter 36. Y'all want to write this down. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 27. Ezekiel chapter 36, 
verse 27. I'm saying it over and over again. I'm repeating it because I want you to get it. Because this is a very, very important verse. This verse right here connects with what Messiah said about the coming of the Holy Spirit. Where he said he is called the Spirit of Truth. And what is he going to do? He's going to guide you in truth. Right? Listen to what this says. In Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 27. And I want y'all to read the entire 30, uh, 36th chapter of Ezekiel so that you can understand that this is prophecy with regard to the future from the time of the 6th century BCE. From the time when Ezekiel was prophesying, this prophecy was futuristic. I'm just going to read it now. Verse 27 of Ezekiel chapter 36, it says, I will put my spirit within you. So listen to this. This is what Yah says. Now, in the previous verse, Yah says, I'm going to give you a new heart. And I'm going to put a new spirit in you. But, but in this verse, he says, I'm going to put my spirit in you. He's going to give the Holy Spirit to his people. Look at what it says about this Holy Spirit. Look at what it says. I will put my spirit within you and make you follow my statutes. Uh-oh. So what we begin to discover here in this verse is that the purpose of Yahuwah putting his spirit into his people is for the specific purpose of them giving or having an enablement to keep the statutes. What's the statutes? That's a part of the commandments of the scriptures of the Torah. I'm going to keep reading. And make you follow my statutes and be careful to obey my ordinances. So the purpose of the Holy Spirit, based on Ezekiel, is to provide enablements, to give power, to give spiritual ability to the people of Yah in Yahshua to be able to obey the word. This is the prophecy of Ezekiel. Yahshua called the Ruach HaKodesh, the Ruach of Truth, the Ruach Imunah. He calls him the Spirit of Truth. We know that Yahshua then said that truth is the Word because it is the Word that sets apart His people, the commandments, statutes, and judgments. We know within the framework of the history of our forefathers. When they prayed their prayers, they would always make statements with regard to the commandments sanctifying us as his people. And Yahshua confirms that. He says to the Father, I want y'all to make, I want you to make them one. And he says, sanctify them with your truth. Your word is truth. So when we talk now and tie all of this into what we as believers are to be using for getting a word from Elohim, getting the will of Elohim, getting the counsel of Elohim, we have two things. We have the word and the spirit. So yes, rightly so. The Spirit guides. The Spirit speaks. The Spirit gives illumination. And He makes known to us future events. But in all that the Spirit does, and in all that the Spirit says, it is all connected to and in agreement with what the Word of Elohim has already declared. And so when we begin to seek Elohim for direction, when we want to know, Abba Yah, 
What is the word for this season? We don't need to go and look at no blood moon. We don't need to go look at no super moon. We don't need to go look at no constellations. We don't need to go look at no Bible code and try to perform geometria. We don't need to look at numerology and see if somebody falls within the numbers of 777. We don't need to do any of that because all of those methods which many believers in our day have consigned themselves to doing because it has become fashionable over the past 40-something years. Somebody puts out a book to pray a certain way, and then everybody begins to pray a certain way. Somebody puts out a book about laughing, and then everybody goes to laughing. Somebody puts out a book about Bible codes, and now everybody wants to look at the Bible codes. Somebody puts out a book about blood moons, full moons, multiple moons, super moons, and somebody wants to put out a book without realizing that all of that stuff is tied to witchcraft. You say, mode, you step in, in areas that you ought not step in. No, I'm right on target. Because the Most High already told us the ways in which we must be seeking Elohim for direction and counsel. And if we deviate, if we go outside the framework of the plain written scriptures and the illumination of the Holy Spirit and the prophetic word of the Spirit through the gifts of the Ruach, be it tongues, interpretation, or gift of prophecy, if we are trying to go outside those boundaries to obtain our information and then try to confirm things that we want to see happen, because believe you me, I've been hearing some stuff that people are wanting to make happen in their personal life, and also in the lives of people in government. The Most High says no to that. We are not supposed to tap into those areas. As the people of Elohim, we have to trust in the fact. As Elohim has said, I have declared the end at the beginning. And I will do all my pleasure. That means that everything that is allowed in the earth realm, the Almighty saw it before we got here. And we need to stop trying to make things happen. The thing that we have been assigned to do by Abba Yah has come through the Messiah, Yahshua. Yahshua told us what we need to do. And the message is not new. And he's not giving us no new information. He's not giving us no new revelation. He's not giving us no new assignment. The assignment is the same until he returns. He said this message of the kingdom shall be preached into all the world throughout the nations as a witness and then shall the end come. Hebrews chapter 1. It said that in sundry times. Yahuwah spoke to us by the prophets. But in these last days he has spoken unto us by his son. So we've already got the final word. And he told us. Over in Matthew, in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 and 20. Go read it. He said, go into all the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them into the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all things. And let me say that again. 
He said, and teaching them to observe all things. And lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the age. That was the mandate. There, there is no new information, y'all. There, there is no new stuff we need to be doing. What we're supposed to be doing is putting our face to the grind in teaching scripture, making disciples, and after we get people saved, we're to then teach them to live obedient lives to the scripture. Make disciples. Teach people to live in obedience. Make disciples. Teach people to be in obedience. Make disciples. Teach people to be in obedience. Bring this message of the kingdom to the nation. That is our responsibility. When you get off track and you try to get into other things outside of what Elohim has called us to do, then we get in trouble. And we misrepresent the purpose of the creator. I share this today. And I needed to make these distinctions. Between the right way and the wrong way. Of getting direction. And getting and seeking for the will of Elohim in our life. Because there are many believers who have gotten off track and it has produced a great deal of confusion in this country and in our world. And so I hope that this discussion, this teaching has been helpful. I trust that it has helped to shed some light as to how the Almighty wants us to seek Him. How He wants us to depend upon Him. So that we will concern ourselves with Him leading and guiding our lives by His Word. His Word, His commandments, His statutes, His judgments. His testimonies. Those are the methods by which we obtain direction, counsel, and answers for our life, for the present and for the future. So let us stay in the path of Elohim. And if we do that, we will have his support, which means we will be blessed, and we will not walk in the way of confusion. Let us pray. Abba Yah, thank you so much for this opportunity to be able to share and to communicate this teaching today. I trust that it has been helpful, that it has been edifying, and that it has brought encouragement and brought guidance to your people and to each one. There may be some here that may not be believers who have chosen to watch today. I ask that you would touch their lives. I pray, Abba Yah, that you would guide them to Yahshua. May your spirit cause them to turn in repentance and come to you. If there are backsliders that are watching, I pray, Abba Yah, that you touch them that they might return back to you. And that they may find peace as they look to you for direction and you alone through your word. May you be glorified in all things in Yahshua's great name. Amen. Well, I trust that each and every one of you have been encouraged and strengthened by this teaching. I trust that it has helped to bring clarity to the questions that some of you may have and also to hopefully alleviate confusion because Abba Yah is not an Elohim of confusion, but he is an Elohim that brings clarity and purpose into our lives. 
There aren't any secrets that he's withholding from us or he wants us to go and search out. He makes his way plain to his people because we are his people. We are his bride. And a husband doesn't keep secrets from his bride because the husband and the bride are one. The husband and the wife are one. And so I trust that this has been an encouragement. And those of you who have found this teaching to be edifying, we ask that you provide a donation to uh, this ministry because it is the work of Elohim. And when you donate, you're helping us to be able to get this word to the nations. You're helping us to be able to continue to help those who are less fortunate than we are. Because we not only uh, utilize the donations for getting the word out, but also to try and help those who are needy. As we seek to obey the command of Elohim and remember the poor, we use the funds that Elohim brings in to be able to minister to those needs as well. And so you can go to our website at www.ncmmi.20m.com. Click on the donate button and give a donation of any amount that Elohim puts on your heart. You can also do it by cash app. Our cash app code is dollar sign NCMMI. We thank you so much for choosing to tune in and to attend this teaching with us today. This is Voice of Messiah Ministries during our midweek teaching at Messiah Tabernacle. And so we bless the Most High for each and every one of you, and we ask that you would tune in again with us on Shabbat, which is Saturday. We meet at 12.30 p.m. And I want to say to each and every one of you, Shalom.